As Waterfire Roma readies for tonight's lighting, we are your exclusive source to keep track of it all, every step of the way. And this morning, we have more of the sights and sounds from the Italian capital. The preparations for Waterfire Roma continue on the banks of the Tiber River in Rome. As volunteers bolt and secure the braziers that will hold the flames above the water's surface, another necessary ingredient is added to the mix. Firewood, firewood, and more firewood. But there are still a lot of pieces to organize. Water fire creator Barnaby Evans explains. The uh, challenge of water fire is you need all the different elements in place. The braziers, the water flow rate, the firewood by the river, the boats in the river, the braziers here fabricated in the river. And we're slowly getting those in place. We've got uh, about half of the braziers in. The firewood's been delivered. It's a little on the wet side, but we can, uh, we can work with that. So now we're waiting for the boats. And there's some question about whether the roadway is, has too many curves for the boats to be able to get here. Yet the work continues as the day wears on. Waterfire Providence is known not only for the flames, but also for the creative performers. And Rome's lighting, it seems, will be no different. Piede, piede. Suspended from an arch and floating feet above the water's surface, this acrobat is rehearsing for what undoubtedly would be a gravity-defying show. Then, after dark, an Italian translator helps Barnaby explain instructions to the torchbearers. This flame is very big. It's a grande fiamme, molto grande. Tonight, these people will safely bring the flames to the water to start the inaugural European water fire. We've learned that the hanging hoop dance performer is just one part of a larger troupe who will be performing this weekend. And those water fire volunteers that you've seen hard at work, well, they did get a chance to go tour some of the city of Rome. And our very own Michaela Johnson met up with them. Take a look. Well, the days never seem to end for the water fire team. They are busy and hard at work getting ready for those two lightings happening on Friday and Saturday nights. But they did find time to relax and kind of take a tour of Rome. And joining me now is Peter Van Erp. And Peter, why did you decide to kind of take the team out for, for a little break today? Well, we've been working hard for two days, and so today it was time to see where we were working hard. So we're walking through some of the most historic areas of Rome, from where uh, Romulus and Remus were first uh, found uh, being saved by a she-wolf, through to the imperial palaces and the Colosseum. And where are we now? I mean, we have such an impeccable view of the city. Uh, we're on the side of the Palatine Hill. We're overlooking the Capitol mm -hmm. Hill. The Palatine Hill gives us the word palace. The Capitoline Hill gives us the word capital. Excellent. All right. Well, we see we're even learning a little bit on the way, too. And I know that you guys were busy today getting those braziers in the water. And uh, the work just doesn't end for you, right? Yeah, well, actually, when we're done, we're probably going to have to put a few more braziers in the water. And, you know, you're welcome to help us, too. I absolutely will. You know, he said it, it does take a lot of hands and a lot of hard work to get the entire Tiber River ready for, again, those two water fires happening in, in just a short time. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. Yeah, a matter of hours now, really. And uh, for the Roadshow in Rome, I'm Michaela Johnson. And we should also mention that while a little bit about Waterfire Providence, the volunteers made their way to Rome to take part in the historic lightings. Donations and funding for Waterfire Providence do stay local. There is another organization called Waterfire International that helps to fund overseas lightings. And coming up on Monday, the beautiful images of the weekend's lighting.